All right. So the co-main event, and I got to say, this is this is a super treat and just a really intriguing matchup uh, that we get to see now for the third time. Brendan Moreno defends his UFC men's light flyweight championship against Davison Figueredo. Uh, Liam, I'll let you uh, go ahead with this one. Do you have any thoughts on this fight? Yeah, yeah, I do, as a matter of fact. Um, you know, this isn't a fight I've looked into in depth. And yeah. so it's it's potential that I'll change my mind a little bit as we get closer to fight time. But, you know, last time the outcome sort of swayed my opinion on this fight. Um, I was a Figueredo believer, and I felt like the holes in his game have, have been exposed a little bit by, by Moreno. I think Moreno's got better pace. I think he's got better cardio. I think he's a better grappler. Um, I think he's a better scrambler in the wrestling. And if you match better scrambling with pace and cardio, that means you can extend the, the scrambles for longer. So if you're doing poorly in the scramble, no problem. Just keep it going. Keep it going. Uh, and I think that the longer he's able to do that, the more Figgy is going to gas. That being said, you know, wholesale lifestyle changes from Figueredo here moved camp uh, training with Henry Cejudo, probably on a gang of designer steroids. Uh, and I appreciate that about him. Uh, that's probably going to be a factor in the fight. I just think he's too big for the weight. You know, I think it's kind of like um, a Cody Garbrandt situation here. I think he's going to feel the impact of Moreno's strikes. I think in addition, Moreno's fast. He's getting better. Um, you know, he's got a lot of big opportunities ahead of him. If he can close this chapter of his career and put Figueredo in the, the, the past. And uh, I think Figueredo still has life. Uh, at the bantamweight division after he loses this fight. I just think, you know, he's kind of making a mistake here and being bullheaded about wanting this rematch. Um, you know, ask and you shall receive. I think he's going to get beat by Brandon Moreno inside the distance once again. Uh, and if not, I think Brandon Moreno still can outpoint him to a decision here as he proved in the first fight, uh, keeping it close. Locks, what do you think about this one? Yeah, this is an interesting fight. And I mean, I should disclose that... Uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of too many fighters, but I am a Davison Figueredo fan. You know, I like the guy. Um, I felt like he won the first fight. I mean, I'm not the only Figueredo fan. That, you know, I'm a fan. Of course, I'm going to say that. Yeah. Um, uh, some people agree with me. Some people don't. It is what it is. It was definitely close. Um, but I did feel like he won. And I didn't play him in the second fight, though, because there's just something about it that just gave me a bit of a funny feeling. And, uh, you know, lo and behold, Figueredo looked not like himself at all in that fight. And I was just kind of like, you know, what the hell was that? I didn't have any money on it. And that just, that performance makes me really nervous about playing him again. And I'm not honestly sold on Brandon Moreno. I feel like I might even take Pantoja to beat him, which he already has. Um, I might take Askarov to beat him if they were to make that fight. Um, but it's more just like, I mean, like Liam said, he figured out is huge for this weight. And I mean, if that's what he's going to look like, after uh, this cut, what he looked like last time, I mean, I'm not confident in betting him at all. And I feel like uh, I would probably have to go with Moreno for an early prediction here. Be hoping for Davison, of course. But, yeah, I mean, his time at 125 just might be done because, I, I mean, what the hell was that last time? That didn't look like him at all. I don't know who that was, but didn't look like Davison to me. I feel like on his best day, uh, he definitely could beat Moreno. And uh, I feel like on his best day, he, he could beat anybody, but it just doesn't look like we're going to get too many of those good days at the 125 pound division anymore for Davison. So that is kind of pushing me over to the Moreno side. It's not really that I like Moreno that much. It's just that I'm just, I don't know how much life Davison has left at 125. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's, I got a lot to say here. Um, I was, uh, you know, going back to even before this channel with, uh, odds.com and and even before that like from the very beginning of davison figueredo getting into the ufc i was a huge believer of this guy and at one point when he first picked up the belt uh you know when he uh when he picked up the belt this, uh, with the win the second time over benavides i feel like at that point he he was the best flyweight on earth and i think that that includes uh uh, Adriano Marias over at one championship, and I thought it, it, somebody like uh, you know Horiguchi coming down to flyweight or any of those guys. I thought Ryzen one championship, whatever anybody who can get to down to one twenty five. I thought he was the best guy. I thought that he won the first fight 
against Brandon Moreno. Um, and then the thing was, uh, you know, I thought when this, the second fight, when the odds came out, I was very confused because I was like, you know, how is he such a, still such a big favorite um, when the fight was so close and I know that there was the narrative of well he was sick and he you know he had a hard time cutting weight and my reply then was well how do we know that it's not going to happen again and it almost did happen again Figueredo had to take the extra like 30 minutes to uh to make weight uh when they met the last time so I'll say it again how do we know that he's not going to have issues cutting weight again and I know that he's had uh, a ton of lifestyle changes and moving to a different camp and stuff like that, you know, but he's still, he's still, he's still Devison Figueredo. He's not going to, it doesn't matter if you change your camp, you can't change your body. And that dude probably walks around at like 175 pounds and cuts down to 125. And he is absolutely jacked. He could probably fight at featherweight if he wanted to, if he wasn't so short. Um, and yeah, I don't, it's, it's tough. And now it's, it's so interesting. This fight really also, it reminds me, I made the comparison earlier. It reminds me of, um, even with the draw, it reminds me of, of, uh, Wilder and Fury because the first fight Figueredo comes in as a big, big, like minus 290 favorite. They draw, they go again to the rematch. Figueredo's a big favorite again. Moreno wins. And now it's completely flipped in the trilogy fight with Moreno now a minus 165 favorite and Devison Figueredo now the underdog. Um, I got to say, it's tough to bet against my guy, Devison Figueredo, um, especially at plus money. This might almost be a pass for me because unless I can get Moreno, uh, it's hard. To, uh, I don't know. I have to break this one down a little bit more because I... I want to bet Moreno inside the distance, but I wouldn't be shocked if this one was much more similar to the first fight where it was just a, a, a drag out war that went five rounds. That is on the, the assumption that Figueredo is going to look healthy and be able to make weight and, you know, not have food poisoning or, you know, dehydration poisoning or something like that. This is a type of fight where you have to look at the uh, weigh in. You have to look at fight week. You have to look at uh, the you know the you have to look at the 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 factors outside of the cage. You got to look at these all these non tangible factors in this fight because it's hard you know a month out to have a staunch opinion because so much can change, especially with these flyweights. Uh, yeah, I, I love the guy. I think Figueredo at one point was one of the best flyweights on earth, if not the best flyweight on earth. But this might be the the downward spiral, and uh, it's 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 hard to pass on him at plus money. But I would hate to do that and him just get starched again. Uh, so yeah, that's that's how I feel about that one. Um, Liam, any final thoughts about that one? Yeah, I just feel like from a confidence standpoint, you know, it's it's going all the wrong way for for Figueredo here. You know, the first time they have a draw, it's close enough. You know, you can make an excuse. There's a there's a this and a that going into it, and so they come out for a clean rematch. That's the idea. And Moreno has a lot more confidence. It looked like than the first fight, and he shows up, performs admirably, uh, able to get the finish victory. What, or is he going to be less confident now? Like he's going to be much more confident now. Uh, he knows he could beat him. He knows he can go 25 minutes with him. He knows he's not afraid of the power like everybody else is. Uh, and so unless he gets hurt by a big shot, um, I feel like this is going to be a fight where, where Moreno is able to take it over as the fight goes on. You know, Figgy, when he's at his best, is throwing a lot of like committed, heavy, high impact offensive maneuvers that – tax the body of energy uh and i think especially making all the lifestyle changes and everything to uh with henry cejudo and those guys i feel like the only way they can do that to change his body is going to have to dig into some of that muscle going to have to dig into some of that power base and then what are we left with are we going to turn him into a volume guy or we get it's possible that he could still land that big cracking power shot i'd want to see it to believe it you know he's looking like uh 
88% of himself right now. If you look at his Instagram, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy, man. He, he looks like a different person um, physically. So that could be a good thing. It's just like, uh, I kind of want to see it. He looks very thin. You know, I'm worried about one of these effing leg breaks, man. Like, uh, honestly, um, just looks like, like it looks a little unnatural, man. Yeah, the thing the thing that he did so well, Figueredo, was it was the threat of his power. Like if you go and look at the Benavides fight, he doesn't even he hits him once and then he just starts walking forward and Benavides is just retreating and and Figueredo is just coming forward and it's the threat of the power that uh is so much more of an offensive tool. Moreno's now felt that power for uh you know more than two two separate fights you know a full five round fight and then the fight that he won he's felt that power so unless something has changed uh, i would say advantage moreno there and then if he's if figueredo is doing something to change uh to take away a little bit of that power then i still i gotta go more advantage moreno uh locks do you have anything to add yeah, I mean, just to tie it up, I mean, there's just a lot of question marks around Davison Figueroa coming into this one. I feel like we kind of know what Brandon Moreno is going to look like. You know, like Liam said, he is going to be confident. He is going to come out there and know that he can compete and that he can win. And uh, Davison Figueroa, I mean, he looked pretty good in the first fight. When he was sick, he should have got sick again for the second fight because he looked horrible in it. And if he looks like that again and I have money on him, like I am not going to forgive myself. So this is more than likely going to be a pass for me because uh, – yeah, I mean, there's just too many question marks for me. And maybe once we get closer to fight night, I'll have a better read. But right now, it's just like, I believe Davison is better on his best day, but I just don't know if we're going to see that. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, this, again, I stand by it. And I've said this the, the past, I said the, this the last time that they fought. Um, this is, you, you cannot bet this fight like on, on a look ahead. <laughs> so I'm going to advocating for everybody that's watching this video for doing exactly that. You can't do that. You have to watch fight. You have to, you know, and I never like to watch fight interviews, like uh, media interviews, at least, you know, I like to watch them for content purposes, but not for my betting purposes. I don't take in anything that a fighter says during fight week, but how they look you know how they sound you know just their their mindset that that's different and with figueredo in this fight i think you got to look at how he looks on wednesday media day thursday press conference and uh the the weigh-ins on friday because i feel like that helped me last time because that's what got me off figueredo in the rematch and on moreno um but i'll say this just to close on this because the perfect thing to happen here this is my opinion Figueredo loses, moves up to bantamweight, and fights Cody Garbrandt at 135 pounds. What do you guys think about that? <laughs> Liam. I know who I'd be betting in that fight, and it's not Cody Garbrandt. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's a pretty solid matchup. Locks, what do you think? Dude, I'd love to see that fight. I mean, they're obviously were talking about doing. Did it get booked and then Cody got COVID, or were they just talking about it and then he got? Oh it? yeah, I completely forgot about yeah. that. I was, I really wanted to see it, man, uh, and I'd love to see it now because I feel like my guy Davison would probably be able to get it done. So uh, I'd, I'd like to see that one for sure, and I'd probably, probably pick Figueroa more of a fade on Garbrandt, but uh, I don't know. Both guys haven't looked great recently, so who knows yeah. what could happen? But yeah, I'd probably lean towards Davison there. Healthier the weight cut. The problem is, is they're they're both cutting. Well, I mean, at least with Cody now recently and Figueredo the whole time. Although I do feel like Figueredo has fought. Uh, I don't know if he's fought at 135 before. I know that he's fought at 125 and missed weight by like four and a half pounds. So almost 135, but not quite. Uh, but yeah, I feel like I I, I feel like Figueredo is the type of guy where he's wasting his career fighting at 125 now because I feel like if he moves up to 135, as long as it's matchup specific and isn't fighting a six-foot guy like uh, Sean O'Malley, he could have a, a lot of success because I, I feel like his power is going to move up. <laughs> like I said, he's probably walking around 175 pounds. Um, but anyways, that is uh, – we actually – you know, we got a solid – what that's a month a solid month away um so that'll be that'll be fun to look forward to